Your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now. But something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Well, hello again, driven women and aspiring driven women. As promised, with each episode, I'm now going to be sharing with you listeners one of my amazing podcast reviews. You know, podcasters work very hard to produce quality content and get it to you every single week. So we need feedback to keep us doing it. And these reviews really float my boat. Here's one from One Diva RN who says, This podcast is amazing. As a driven woman, I feel like Diane is inside my head and speaking directly to me. Her insight into high achieving women has been life changing. Episode 12, The Cure for Perfectionism, made me realize I don't have to be perfect to be effective or successful. I've been able to push through the need to get it 100% right and land on the other side by getting it done. Thank you, Diane, for this amazing podcast. Well, Diva RN, thank you for giving me this lovely feedback that keeps me going. And hey, if any of you are loving this podcast as much as one Diva RN, do a girl a solid. It is easy, it is fun, and I promise you, I'll read yours too. So here we go, without further ado, this week I bring you Confidently ADHD. And I'll tell you, those two words, confidently and ADHD, didn't always fit together, especially not for me. So I'm going to share with you a story about how much I think This diagnosis has changed since I first learned about it in the 90s and why I think there's actually never been a better time to be a woman with ADHD. Here we go. About this time last year, my husband and I left Portland for San Francisco to attend the bar mitzvah celebration of a good friend of ours. Now, We don't happen to be Jewish, but our long-term friend is. He's a man that my husband met on the beach a few years before we met each other. They met in Bali and bonded instantly over a spontaneous jam session. Fast forward three decades later, he's now married and has a son who's facing a very important day in his life. So naturally, he wanted his long-term friend there. And of course, we knew we needed to come. I've been to a couple of these ceremonies in the past, so I already knew that they involve a lot of sitting and a lot of listening. And I knew that most of what I would be listening to would be in Hebrew, a language that I don't speak nor understand. Needless to say, without my ADHD medication, this would be a very challenging experience. But even with it, it would still be a challenge, although manageable. The boy going through the two-hour bar mitzvah ceremony is not only a 13-year-old boy, but he had ADHD himself. And so does his father, our friend, as well as their other son. When the older of the two boys was diagnosed upon the recommendation of their school, I got a call from the dad. He wanted my opinion on whether he should put his son on medication, what alternatives there were, and how much of an impact ADHD would have on his son's life. Now, at that time, our friend had no idea that he also had ADHD himself and that he passed these traits on to his son, at least not until I told him so. A side note, I think this is the reason why one of my favorite clients has always called me the speaker of uncomfortable truths. 
and I think it really fits. Anyway, back to our story. It's a role that I'm very familiar with, and I I honestly feel obligated to perform because the reality is most adults who have ADHD find out or figure it out when one or more of their children are diagnosed. Sometimes it happens that a sibling stumbles across the information and can't wait to share it, or a friend could be a partner. Sometimes it's a boss or a coworker. But the pattern is often the same when it's the parent of a child. Here's how it usually goes. The school identifies certain behavioral traits that are associated with ADHD and discuss them with the parents. Occasionally, the parent is receptive and immediately embraces the idea, happily taking their child to the pediatrician or child psychiatrist for diagnosis and treatment. Much more often, though, they are concerned, angry, embarrassed, or defensive. It usually takes a while before the child gets seen by someone who can make the diagnosis because the parent or parents oftentimes needs time to go through what's kind of like the stages of grief and loss with this information. And instinctively, many parents feel chastised or blamed, which may or may not have been the teacher's intention. Meanwhile, Our ADHD child continues to struggle in the ways that we do with this condition, and the phone calls from the school also continue. Well, naturally, the elephant in the room is that one or both of the parents also have ADHD and don't know it. They might suspect, but they don't really want to know, or they might have no idea. It can take years and sometimes even decades, for this to be acknowledged. There are many reasons, as individual as there are families, but oftentimes they come down to stigma, inadequate knowledge about how to identify ADHD in adults. There's a lot of misinformation out there from there's no such thing as ADHD to it's just the drug companies trying to pathologize normal behavior to if you just tried harder, listen, If you have ADHD or identify with the traits, I don't have to tell you, you've heard them all and probably thought most of them about yourself, as have I. But there are usually key indicators, how ADHD presents from one person to the next. And even though they vary widely, including taking gender into account, eventually people do figure it out or just decide it's something else. In the case of our friend, that two-hour phone conversation with me a few years ago led to a series of decisions about how they would raise their son, not to embrace ADHD necessarily, but also not to deny it. They would raise him to be curious, funny, intelligent, talented, and extremely confident with both peers and adults. They never medicated him, but chose to help him develop his interests and abilities, give him opportunities to gain self-awareness and self-esteem through doing what he does best, and provided loads of structure and support around the areas where he was challenged or limited. As I sat with his family, friends, and Jewish congregation on the day of his bat mitzvah, I witnessed that life can look very different for a child with ADHD when the parents make these choices. And it was heartwarming, to say the least. We went to the reception dance party afterwards and then on to the family home for a few additional hours. All in all, I had the chance to watch this boy in a variety of circumstances, on a day that was both exciting and stressful. I saw him manifest all the tendencies of the ADHD brain, tendencies that I identify with and I have passed on to all of my children. What was most apparent, though, was his very obvious self-confidence. I witnessed moments of frustration, boredom, disappointment, confusion, and overwhelm 
It was a long day, and he was just a kid. But he took all of them in stride. I needed to keep reminding myself that he was only 13. He seemed so mature. And I needed to remember, his ADHD is unmedicated, and he's being raised by a father who also has unmedicated ADHD and a mom who struggles with anxiety and OCD and a younger brother with a very strong personality. If you've read about the consequences of ADHD, then you've come across some horror stories and warnings just like I have. But I don't predict that any of them are going to happen to this boy. And it's not just because he is a child of privilege. Was it the fact that his parents lived in the Middle East for several years during his childhood? Or that his Russian-born mother took him to Moscow on a regular basis and he speaks three languages? Or was it because his lawyer father is also a lifelong musician who taught both his sons how to play multiple musical instruments, even forming a little band with them? and they performed together during their vacations whenever the opportunity presented itself? Was it because his parents are older than the norm and had the means to provide for this kind of lifestyle? Well, yes, I suspect all of these advantages contributed to this child becoming so confident. But I'm also equally certain that what might have mattered even more is the simple fact that this mom and this dad decided he's not broken, he's not deficient, he's not less than anything or anyone because of his ADHD. They decided to embrace the philosophy that would made him different, made him special, and they created a lifestyle that supported him in believing it too. They allowed him to develop his interests, follow his curiosity, do things his way, and learn to advocate for himself with both kids his age and with the adults in his world. Conforming to the norm was never the goal. Now, let me be clear. He's not a rebel or an outcast or a misfit. He's an individual. He was kind to his friends, and while confident, he was not entitled arrogant, or petulant. I strongly suspect that this boy will be a leader who will one day do something amazing in the world. As a matter of fact, I'd bet good money on it. When I think back to the early 90s when I was in graduate school, dealing with my oldest son's ADHD and working with a group of young boys with ADHD during my training program at UCLA, Things were very different then. For one thing, the belief at that time was ADHD is outgrown. So we never looked for it in the parents. We also believed it was gender-based, and we only saw it in little boys because little boys were the only ones we were looking at. It was years before we would come to recognize and appreciate that ADHD It's a lifelong condition. It's not something you outgrow, and it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. We also understand that just as many females have ADHD as males, that ADHD is present across every race and culture and ethnicity, and it is also prevalent in people who have other forms of diversity. There are many people in the gay and lesbian and transgender community, non-binary folk who are ADHD, and ADHD has always been here. It will always be here. The name has changed over time, and the way we describe it has also changed. But I like to think that this boy is one example of someone whose parents made the bold brave choice to raise him to see himself as fully capable and actually quite special. And you know what? He is. I can only imagine the kids that I worked with early in the 90s when I started questioning 
whether ADHD was a lifelong condition by meeting their parents, but years before the psychiatric community began to see this as the norm. I can only imagine how things might have been different for so many of us over such a long time if we had known that what makes us different makes us special. And nothing's actually wrong here. You can be fully confident with ADHD. You just have to do things differently and believe that it's so. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope that if you are the parent of a child with ADHD, it inspires you to think about how you might make some changes in the environment that you're providing for your child. But since ADHD is a genetic condition, and it came from one or both of you, the first place to go is to embrace the thought to yourself, there's nothing wrong here. And when you give a smart brain a question like, what are the reasons for me to be confident? What are my gifts? What are my strengths? What are my unique abilities? You will find plenty of evidence to create confidence of your own. If you're a female business owner or entrepreneur who has ADHD, I don't have to tell you, it impacts everything. Your perfectionism, your procrastination, your people-pleasing, your distractibility, disorganization, imposter complex, all of that gets in the way of sharing your brilliance with the world. But guess what? I've got you. Up until now, it's only been possible to work with me in private coaching one-on-one, but I kept getting requests for groups. So I've decided to go all in on groups starting this fall at two different levels. Want to figure out if working with me in a group coaching experience is right for you? And if so, which one? There's a link in the show notes. We'll get you on the wait list and start giving you all the details to make the right choice for you. Want to hear from someone who's actually worked with me and discovered that with ADHD, as an entrepreneur, there is no magic pill. Here's my client, Rachel. I didn't have you helping me along the way to understand a lot of this stuff. The meds would have been a waste for me, a complete and total waste. I would have had a little bit more energy maybe, but still the habits, whatever. There's no magic pill. It's always going to be something I'm going to have to work on. And I am understanding that and being okay with that and just kind of working through that and thinking and being intentional and stopping myself and doing all of the things for the first time in my life. I'm going to tell you right now, the meds have allowed me to slow stuff down enough that I've never been this effective at anything cognitive ever in my life. But I've also never had it explained to me by somebody who understands what's going on in my head either. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. One more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning. Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.